G'day, I'm Michael Forster from ICT International. What I'm doing here may look a little unusual, but what I'm doing is I'm taking a stem core from this tree to work out the sapwood in the tree. The reason why I'm doing that is because I want to install this SFM1 sap flow meter into this tree. This particular instrument measures the sap flow on the tree. But before I start to measure sap flow, I need to know what it is. Now when we use the word sap and plants in the same sentence, we usually think, think of things such as the phloem and sugars, or syrup in a maple tree, or rubber in a rubber tree. But what we're in fact measuring here is water flow in this tree. The reason why we don't call water flow and we call it sap flow is because it's not pure water in this, inside of this tree. The water inside of this tree has other things in it, such as minerals and nutrients, including nitrogen and phosphorus. So therefore we call it sap rather than water. But essentially when we're measuring sap flow, what we are measuring is water flow or water movement inside of a tree. Okay, so I'm just removing my stem core from the tree now and I'm going to put some colored dye onto it. So what this dye is doing is gonna change colors on the, the sapwood and the heartwood. So basically what we have here, this is the bark. There's a small region here, which is the phloem. You see this uh, light colored orange part here, that is our sapwood. And this reddish color here, that is our heartwood. So sap flow occurs in the sapwood of all trees. Sapwood is a conducting wood or where the water flows or the fluid flows in the tree. So we're going to measure sap flow in this region here. Your sap flow is going to look different depending on the species you measure, the time of day and the time of year that you measure. Here is an example data set of seven days of sap flow data during a summer period. Early in the week, we see high sap flow rates. It is nice sunny weather. Then on Wednesday, we see sap flow increase in the morning, but then drop suddenly. A storm or some rain event has occurred. It is then cleared and sap flow resumes on its way. Later in the week, sap flow has become half of what it was earlier in the week. This is an example of cool and cloudy weather. As you can see, just over one week, sap flow can vary quite a lot. If you do not water your plant, sap flow will also decline. Here is a data set over seven days. You can see peak sap flow is declining because we haven't watered the plant. On the afternoon on the sixth day, we've given some water to the plant and you can see straight away sap flow has increased. The next day, sap flow has returned back to what it was earlier in the week. It's always interesting to look at sap flow in deciduous species. These trees here are going to undergo bud bursts in a few weeks time. And their sap flow will look something like this. So at the moment it is zero and as the leaves come out, sap flow will increase and then take off. At the end of the year, during senescence and leaves fall off the tree, the sap flow will look more like this. So now sap flow is declining and as the leaves fall off the tree, it will eventually go to zero. There is one last thing to keep in mind. Sap flow and transpiration are not quite the same thing. Transpiration is water going out of the leaves in a plant. Sap flow occurs in the stem, the roots or branches of a plant. It's always important never to get the two confused. So my SFM1 sap flow meter is now installed measuring sap flow on this tree. For more information and some interesting case studies, go to ictinternational.com.